Ever since the beginning of Jay's career, fans have argued about whether Hove and his music were gangsta or if he had stolen some or many of his lines from another rapper. However, there's at least one incident that could have completely derailed Jay-Z's career and put him in jail for years. It was a very serious situation near the beginning of his career, and one of Biggie's business partners was on the receiving end of Jay-Z's bad temper at the time. In December 1999, Jay-Z and Lance Un Rivera had a heated argument over an undisclosed matter at the Kit Kat Club nightclub in New York. It happened in the midst of a release party for Q-Tip's album Amplified to which multiple celebrities and hip hop industry big names like P. Diddy, Lil C's, and Lil Kim were invited. Things got physical, and Jay-Z allegedly stabbed Rivera in the abdomen and back multiple times. The two, quote, definitely had a working relationship, according to Aaron Burke, a spokesperson for Rivera, who said that Hove and Rivera knew each other for a long time. They both grew up in Brooklyn together. Both had connections to Biggie Smalls. Important to note, the Notorious B.I.G. and Jay-Z always had a warm and pretty close relationship. They worked together for years and helped each other in their private lives when it was needed. And Jay-Z also helped himself to many of his lines during his career. Jay-Z never shied away from acknowledging Biggie's influence on him and his career, and the two always had respect for each other's music. Lance Rivera, who would have personal issues with Jay-Z later, was also on good terms with Big, but the two mostly kept a business relationship rather than being close friends. The incident in question happened two years after Biggie's passing. So basically, the issues between Jay-Z and Lance had nothing to do with Biggie Smalls, to make things clear. What went wrong then? Well, that's where the fans' opinions differ. The initial theory revolved around the business Jay-Z and Owen were working together. Lance Rivera was a producer for numerous Jay-Z projects and was working with him on Hove's fourth album, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Carter. Everything was going fine. The album was ready for release in a month, and Jay-Z wanted to celebrate finishing the project by throwing a listening party at Irving Plaza with his crew. This party took place the same day as Q-Tip's album release party, where Jay-Z and Un butted heads. Hove performed some of his new tracks here and it was a usual event until Jay found out that his upcoming album was already bootlegged a whopping month before its release. Back in the day, the internet wasn't that widespread, and bootlegs were a far bigger deal than they are nowadays and had a greater impact on artists' income. After all, you can't distribute your album to every store across the nation in just a day, as opposed to when you can just put it up on streaming platforms immediately or less than 24 hours after it leaks. Usually, the records would leak a couple of days, maybe weeks before the release, after they would get to stores and someone would get their hands on them. But entire month could potentially hurt a project to the point where it made basically no sense to even release it. It made Jay-Z absolutely angry. He even started yelling, F the bootleggers, and cussing them out from the stage. A big part of the problem was the fact that music was mostly distributed physically at the time, so the internet wasn't to blame for the leaking. Bootleggers had to gain access to the copies of the album that were typically given to them by the company that produces and distributes the project for promotional and other purposes. Logically, the person who leaked Jay-Z's album should have been someone who got the copy early, like for example a DJ, or it could be someone who worked for the company itself. For one reason or another, Jay-Z had enough evidence to suggest that it was Lance Rivera who bootlegged the upcoming record, which led to Hove taking matters into his own hands and going after him at the party in the Kit Kat Club, where the entire incident happened. Those rumors were circulating in the media right after the incident happened, and some of the biggest music platforms like MTV linked this information to an anonymous source who worked with the police, although there wasn't a single public statement made on the matter. That's why things got even more intriguing when a completely different version, which involved Charlie Baltimore's name, made it to the public eye. Interestingly, those rumors were created by none other than the rapper Cameron, who also had a close relationship with Lance Rivera and Big, and was beefing with Jay at the time. In his diss track towards Hove, Cameron dropped this line, It ain't my fault I'm raw, I'm sorry B, but I want war. And he stabbed Oon over Charlie Baltimore, sucker for love, hmm hmm, sucker for love, kill it, itch, go to trial, hand be stuffed in the glove. There's no need to go in depth about these lyrics, as everything is rather straightforward here. And thankfully, Cameron elaborated on the lines in one of his interviews. This was all over Charlie Baltimore. I'm not going to get into the details of what happened and why, but it's just a lot of where Jay liked Charlie at one time, and that was Biggie's girl, unfelt that that was the artist and Jay was teaching her the business. Un and Jay, shoot, they can say a song leaked or whatever, but it was all over Charlie Baltimore. 
Baltimore, on the other hand, debunked those rumors on numerous occasions through the years. Cameron. How you feel about him saying that Jay-Z stabbed Un over you? I don't know really what happened. Um, I was, I actually came there after, like, after the effect. Like, Un was already stabbed. I don't know exactly who stabbed him. I don't think that Jay stabbed Un. Um, but um, there was a record or it was something going on with some bootlegging of some albums or something allegedly that Jay thought that Un was doing to him and apparently that's what sparked it off but by the time I got to the club because if I'm not mistaken it was this huge q-tip party and by the time I got there everybody was just running out so I'm like what the f is going on like everybody's just running 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 screaming and next thing I know all I see is Un laying on the ground and I'm like what the f is like where what the f is wrong with you He's like, yo, I've been stabbed, I'm stabbed. Although many fans find Charlie's words unconvincing. But if I recall, I recall you saying that you heard us saying that. If you don't mind, can you detail that day from your point of view? I mean, in my opinion, obviously it wasn't over me. This all had something to do with records and, you know, like you said, the bootleg and stuff or whatever. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe Un also said that Jay didn't stab him, right? Add to this weird behavior from the man who got stabbed, Lance Rivera himself, when asked a question whether Baltimore was the reason for the entire situation, and you wouldn't need Sherlock Holmes to notice that something strange happened that night. In one of the recent interviews, Un addressed this rumor and said that he can't speak for Cam's information, as Cameron wasn't there when the incident took place. Rivera looked very uncomfortable talking about this specific Baltimore rumor, but there's no way to tell that for sure as we're obviously not professional, I don't know, body readers. Another rapper, Dutch, from the hip-hop group Major Figures, also believed that the incident happened over something personal. So we would hear things because we were directly in contact. We heard that that was what happened. Mm -hmm. I never saw a copy of Jay-Z's album being done by Un. I can say that. I mm -hmm. never saw that. Right. But some kind of way the shit got to the streets. Mm -hmm. So it's got to come from somewhere. Specifically, Dutch brought up the possibility of Jay-Z and Un butting heads over Charlie Baltimore, who we mentioned before in this story. But, but my thing was, Un was out of pocket for even insinuating in his mind to think of going that direction when that's your brother, Big's ex piece. So you're saying Un was going in that direction. Mm -hmm. And he suspected Jay-Z was also going in that direction. No, he suspected because Charlie and Jay had a good friendship that it wasn't just a friendship. friendship. Mm. However, it wasn't the last mysterious part of the story that made it so odd. Nas, Jay-Z's ex-arch nemesis, dropped the infamous diss track Ether where he mentioned the stabbing incident and added one more rumor to make the story even more twisted. With whiskers like a rat compared to beans you whack, and your man stabbed on and made you take the blame. Well, one might think that this conclusion is rather logical since Jay-Z never had any publicly known legal issues like that and wasn't known for being much of a brawler at any stage of his career. Also, rappers of Hove's magnitude definitely have an entourage that consists of bodyguards and people who were hired to deal with all the, quote, dirty stuff like fighting and especially stabbing or offing someone. So it wouldn't be surprising to know that it wasn't Jay-Z personally who did it. Once again, things weren't as simple as they might seem. A couple of days after the incident took place, Jay-Z turned himself into the police, following his lawyer's advice and was later released on $50,000 bail. Hope was facing charges of felony assault in the second degree, which could have turned into a whopping 15 years behind bars for him. Jay-Z claimed that he wasn't involved in the accident, while his lawyer claimed to have found a videotape that should have shown Jay-Z standing aside when the fight broke out. Hove pled not guilty and was adamant about his innocence during a long and complicated legal process that lasted for two years. Then the situation took a 180 degree turn and Hove pled guilty in court, plainly saying, I stabbed Lance Rivera. Jay-Z got a three-year probation, which prohibited Ho from leaving New York without his probation officer's permission, and managed to escape any jail time. Thankfully for Jay, everything turned out in his favor, 
And pleading guilty was probably what helped Hove save his life and career for the next at least five years. The logical question is why would Hove plead guilty if there was no solid proof of him being Hun's attacker? Well, first things first, it was a very serious charge. And if Jay indeed did it, the court would have found it out sooner or later. So Jay-Z's lawyer probably thought it would be better for Hove to just come clean or at least admit to it even if he didn't do it. So the punishment would be less harsh, he wouldn't get any jail time, and he could continue the momentum of his career. The second reason could be a bit more shrewd. Jay could take responsibility for stabbing Un to raise his street credibility. Sure, it might sound weird and kinda risky considering the stakes, although stranger things have happened in hip-hop, where respect and sometimes fear are everything. Jay-Z addressed this incident numerous times in his tracks, interviews, and in his autobiographical book Decoded. One night I went to Q-Tip's solo album release party and at some point in the night I ran into the guy everyone's been telling me is behind the bootleg, speaking of Lance Rivera. So I approached him. When I told him what I suspected, to my surprise he got real loud with me right there in the middle of the club. It was strange. We separated and I went over to the bar. I was sitting there like, nah, the F this dude did not. I was talking to people, but I was really talking to myself out loud, just in a state of shock. Before I even realized what I was doing, I headed back over to him, but this time I was blacking out with anger. The next thing I knew, all hell had broken loose in the club. That night, the guy went straight to the police, and I was indicted. So in general, the story Jay-Z told in his book matches the official theory in Rivera's reports, although Hove never mentioned exactly what he did to Un, he just described it as a momentary loss of control. In the book, Jay-Z also vowed to, quote, never allow himself to get in a situation like that ever again. Jay also mentioned that this incident was a blessing in disguise for him as it gave him a new sense of responsibility for his actions, even though he was already pretty successful at the time. Do you feel like that was a mistake in hindsight? I believe that was the greatest thing ever. This is going to sound crazy, but I believe that that, that helped me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that, that put the brakes on everything. Mm -hmm. That let me know that no matter how successful you are and how much you're on your road, it can all stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That moment was like, okay, all that stops. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to parties with 30 people. and I'm not, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to put myself in that position no more. Interestingly, Jay-Z's clothing brand, Rockaware, also got some profit off the situation. According to Hope, the Rockaware bubble coat I was wearing when they paraded me in front of the camera started flying off the shelves the last three weeks before Christmas. Basically, the story ended well for Jay-Z and he even managed to learn a valuable lesson and get some paper in return. Everything seems logical so far, right? To sum up, there was an accident where Jay-Z allegedly stabbed Rivera over bootlegging rumors. Then came the assault charges against Jay, Hove denies his involvement, and his lawyer has a videotape to prove it. Nas creates a new rumor saying that it was one of Jay-Z's men who got un, Jay-Z pleads not guilty, drops a track that, aged like milk, called guilty until proven innocent, with R. Kelly, of all people, then changes his stance and pleads guilty, taking responsibility for the incident. I'd say that even though this story has had its fair share of confusion thus far, it's still rather understandable given that it involved a serious crime and made for a complicated trial. Well, recently, Lance Rivera, the man who was hurt in the incident, shared this shocking information after 23 years since the brawl took place. There was Jay and a bunch of us is in there. I ended up getting surrounded by a bunch of people. It was probably 10 knives that I knew of, and I ended up getting stabbed. Me and Jay-Z had a conversation right before I got hit in the head with a champagne bottle. Rivera also opened up a bit on what exactly was said in the argument. It was a brief conversation and I was looking at him like, what are you talking about? You know you effing up the money right now. Basically, Un's words matched the official theory, and they matched Jay's story as well. Ho found out about the bootlegging, and someone linked it to Rivera. Jay confronted Un, left, and then returned when his entourage started a big fight, which gave him an opportunity to hit Rivera with a bottle and stab him. However, there's one interesting fact. Rivera denies that it was Jay-Z who hurt him. I don't know where people got Jay-Z stabbed me from because if anybody knows Jay-Z, Jay-Z a nice guy. He's an artist. He's a poet. He's gifted. And it's never been his history. If Jay-Z had stabbed me, y'all wouldn't have got the Black Album because through my whole history, I'm an eye for an eye type of guy. To clear things up, Lance Rivera said it straight away. No, Jay-Z was not the guy that actually stabbed me that night. When Rivera was asked who the attacker could be, 
He answered that initially he had no idea. And everyone around him was putting the blame on Jay-Z, although Un said that with time he got to know the real attacker. Un said that he absolutely knows who that person is, but refused to go into the details, saying that the public would get the answers in his upcoming autobiographical series. Rivera also said that he was being led by Steve Stout's instructions back in 1999, whose plan was, quote, to get rid of Dame Dash. So what Rivera is basically saying is that he's a victim of circumstance who doesn't know, one, why Jay-Z antagonized him in the first place, two, why everyone thought it was Jay-Z who stabbed him, three, and why Cameron threw Charlie Baltimore's name into the situation. Well, at least one of those things is rather not true, as according to Baltimore herself, who saw the aftermath of the incident in the club, she had this to add to the story. And they all were running out, including Jay. I saw Jay coming out scowling crazy look on his face and then in the back like towards where the bar area was i saw unland on the ground and just you know like shouting like jay-z stabbed me and i'm like what like what is he saying right now i'm with two of my homegirls and he's like jay-z stabbed me jay-z stabbed me so i'm like yo stop saying that so logically un knew where the jay-z rumor came from if a person gets stabbed and immediately shouts the name of the person who did it out loud, there's a chance that everyone who was there would believe it, right? However, of course, it would be difficult for Un, who was in pain, to think rationally. Although he hadn't really done anything in the upcoming years to debunk the theory and help get Jay's name clean. Even up until now, the situation is still very shady. Even after more than 20 years, especially considering all the recent comments made by Charlie Baltimore and Lance Rivera, Today, Jay-Z's still incredibly successful hip-hop legend and businessman with an established resume and legacy in the rap game. So it's unlikely that anything would really change for Hov, even if we get some controversial details of this odd incident in the future. Plus, many people weren't even born when this happened. One thing's for sure though, that night almost destroyed Jay-Z's career single-handedly. So it will remain among one of the biggest mysteries and what-ifs in hip-hop. Make sure to subscribe for more.